Hey guys, welcome to Scorched Earth Tarot. This is going to be a general reading for the sign of Cancer, Sun, Moon and Ascendant. If you don't know what your Moon or Ascendant signs are, have a look in the description box below. All the information you need is in there. Equally, if you would like a personal reading, that information is down in the description box as well. Uh, if you're a subscriber and returning, I really appreciate the support. Thank you so much. If it's your first time to the channel, welcome. And um, I hope you would consider subscribing. It will raise the visibility of the channel and I really am trying to help as many people as possible. So that's why I'm here on YouTube in the first place. Um, what else to tell you? I'm on social media at Scorched Earth Tarot, um, Instagram and Facebook primarily. So if you want to come and join me over there, that would be awesome. And I don't think there's anything else to say. Uh, apart from the retrograde, Mercury retrograde starts uh, on Halloween sign, which is on Thursday, um, for those of you in the UK, or in the West at least, anyway. Um, so be aware of the possibility of new situations, old situations rearing their heads. That can be in the form of people coming back, you know, the people that you've had some sort of interaction with situations reoccurring or even emotions that you thought you'd dealt with that come back to the surface triggered by sometimes something fairly innocuous the important thing to remember is that this is your opportunity to to deal with those things and put them to bed properly so that you can move on right it's not happening to you it's happening for you and that is it's a difference it's a subtle difference but it, it's a really important one you should try and remember through the month of November because uh, not only is it a retrograde but we're also in Scorpio season so everything is deep and intense and possibly a bit much you know so just be warned that's the thing and as a water sign you're probably going to feel it quite strongly with the Scorpio season as well so Jesus throwing my cards around uh, the readings are time stamped so if you don't want to hear me waffle and watch me shuffle go down to the comment box the first comment will be me time stamping the video uh, I think that's everything I need to say so let's get some cards up for you cancer I have three cards for cancer for the month of November your first card is the ace of wands your second card is death tooth flew out together actually do you know what not only did they come out the other way around but I'm gonna keep those together as one actually because they came out together and I'll get another two cards right. it's the moon that's you coming out very strongly in the middle of your reading I love it one more card for cancer please Month of November. The card is the Queen of Wands. Aries, Leo, Sagittarian energy. Queen of the suit. On the bottom of the deck, we have the Four of Pentacles. Right, so I'll just give these a quick shuffle and we'll do some clarifiers and then we'll get on with the reading. Ooh, I've invested in a new camera, so as of tomorrow, when it gets delivered, any of you uh, who are having trouble hearing, and I know the setup isn't ideal, but if you had trouble with the audio, that should be fixed as of tomorrow, so yay. So it's going to be like Christmas. I'm so excited. But in the meantime, just bear with me. I'm trying to talk a little louder than I would usually quite softly spoken most of the time. So, why is death always We've got the Eight of Cups and the Six of Wands. Love it. Why is the moon here? As she says as she flings things across the way. Why is the moon here? Cancer. Nine of Pentacles. 
I like it. The Knight of Pentacles as well. Super. And Queen of Wands. I'm not going to take that because it's just kind of flipped it's rather than jumped. But I'm sure if it wants to come out, it will make itself known again. Where's the Queen of Wands here? Star. <laughs> Why is the Queen of Wands here? Ten of Pentacles. Like it. At the bottom of the deck we have the Queen of Cups. That's your Queen, Cancer. might have to pull a couple more cards but we'll see how we go anyway so <clears throat> the first two cards that you have are death and the ace of wands this is an incredible pair of them. and i'm going to bring them together because that's how they came out you know, rather than reading them separately but individually these cards are the card of scorpio death it's number 13 of the major arcana Death talks about endings, but more than that, it talks about transformations. You know, if you want something new to come into your life, you have to clear out the old. You know, if you think of your life as a as a room in a house, there's only so much stuff that you can put in that room before it becomes uncomfortable. You know, you're kind of like wobbling around furniture and boxes stacked up high and things like that. You know, it's not a comfortable environment. If you keep going and you stuff it full, you can't move in there at all. You know, it's very restrictive. It stops you from from being able to do anything. And you certainly can't put anything new in there. Right? So death is like that, you know, uh, like the mother cleaning the teenage child's room you know utterly ruthless it will come in and it will take out anything that you're not using anything that you're not wearing you know anything that you're not reading all of those things as well as like the old crockery and 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 cups that have been left to go moldy in the corner yes i do have teenage children i speak from experience but the death energy is about transforming from one state to another you know alive dead good, bad, yeah, whatever. But it's always a positive energy because whatever goes was never meant to stay. This is the important thing. Right? It can mean physical death, but it actually rarely does. It's, it's far more transformative than that. And the key with death is not to fight it. And people do. People fight change all the time. You know, they don't want to let things go. And at the bottom of the deck on the main cards of the main deck that I was using is the, is the four of pentacles which speaks specifically of holding on to things too tight you know he's got his feet on his coin you know, he's clutching one to his chest he's got one on his head this is about holding on too hard death says it's time to let it go you know you all have to you know work out how this pertains to you because I'm talking this is general reading it's not specific but you should understand what it is that you need to let go. But if you try and fight it, you're actually just going to hurt yourself more in the long run. Let it go. Because when you let it go, something new happens. Something new can come in. You know, once you've cleared out that room, once you've got rid of those clothes that you haven't worn in five years, but you know you might fit back into at some point. You know, or you know the the 50 books that you kept from when you did a particular course on something, you know, fucking 20 years ago or whatever. I'm talking metaphorically, obviously, because this is this is your internal space. This is both your head and your heart, it's your soul that I'm talking about at the moment. When you let go, that thing that it is that you're clinging on to too hard, 
something new can come in, something new can sprout into existence. And it's the Ace of Wands. Right? So the Ace is at the beginning of the suit. It's fire energy here. It's very sparkly. Yeah. But it's a passionate, creative start in something. You know, it's something that gets you really excited just at the thought of it. So it could be setting up a business. It could be having an idea for a business. It could be meeting someone new because the Ace of, of Wands absolutely can be a sexual relationship. I'm not really seeing any cards on the table that would you know, reinforce that as a thing, but it's totally possible. My friend calls this the dick card. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the point is, it can be any of those things. It could be taking up a new hobby, a new creative hobby. You know, something, something that is a creative, passionate outlet for you. It could be taking up a new sport that you like, you know, rugby or kickboxing or something like that. But the point is, first you have to let go of the thing and then the new thing can come in. Now I pulled two clarifiers for those two cards and the two clarifiers that came up were kind of mean the same thing. We've got the Eight of Cups and we've got the Six of, of Wands, right? The Eight of Cups is about leaving behind things that no longer serve you. Right? More than that, it's about decisively moving away from those things that no longer serve you. You can see he's got his boots on, he's got his cloak on, he's got his wand in his hand, right? He's fucking off over the mountain. He's very deliberately leaving those cups behind. And those cups will have taken time to amass. You, know, you don't get eight cups without putting in effort and time and emotion into, to, into the building of that collection. But the way these cups are stacked makes it very obvious that there's one missing, right? And the step up from the eight is the nine. And the nine is the card of wish fulfillment, right? He's going after what he actually wants. Yeah. YOLO. Life is too short to hang around with a bunch of cups that actually don't do anything for you anymore. I said don't fight it. And this card is actually saying not only don't fight it, but be decisive about it. You know, turn your back on it and move it away. And maybe this is something that you've already done. You know, if this is resonating with you right now, then this is probably something that you're aware of. You know. Whatever this situation is, it's done. It's time to let it go. And if you don't let it go by itself, the universe is gonna whip it out from underneath you anyway, because it's time for it to leave your space. It's time for it to leave your soul. It's time for it to leave your mind. It's time for it to leave your heart. Let it go, Cancer. And then we've got these two. The Ace of Wands and the Six of Wands. The Six of Wands is about victory. Right? Not just any kind of victory. It's conspicuous public victory. He's, he's literally being lauded by all of these people around him. He's got a laurel wreath on his head. And, you know, people are like, well, he did really good. They are acknowledging his achievement in that card. And it's come out directly underneath the wand, the ace of wands. You know, two cards of fire, of passion, of, you know. But living in the moment somewhat as well. I mean, that's what the wands are very much about. And I'm looking at the amount of green on this card and I feel like whatever it is that, that you've been holding on to, and in fact now I look at it, it's, it's borne out by the cards around it. A green is love, that's what that means to me. This is, this is a situation where you've poured love and care into, and for whatever reason it's not working now. Either it's not being reciprocated in a way that is fair, or it's just, reached its expiration date you know you've been the one who's poured so much into this this queen of cups your queen look at how she's lovingly staring at that cup there right you've been the one who's poured in all the effort to this whatever this is but you're not getting it back because it's done 
it's finished. You were to learn something from it, but now it's time to move on and let it go. And when you do, what steps into the void that is created by moving away from that thing is something that is successful, exciting. And pretty inspirational for other people, actually, I would say. You know, all of these people who are coming out and congratulating this person or whatever it is that they've achieved, you know, some small part of them is probably wishing that they were the ones on the horse parading through town, you know? It, it's an inspirational thing, whatever your ace of wands is. And it truly could be just choosing to live your life differently. You know, I thought I just said YOLO, right? You know, like life is too short to live it on other people's terms. It's too short to live it doing something that you're not entirely, you know, like eaten up with. I uh, fucking can't remember think of the word that I want, but you know, this is the thing. This is this is someone living their best life right here, even if it isn't a new hobby relationship you know any of those things just choosing to live your life differently is something that people will notice and the next card that you've got is the moon and this is your card it's the card of cancer is 18 in the major arcana and it's a particularly beautiful depiction i think but the moon talks about things that are hidden things that are obfuscated can be secrets but often I take it to be the subconscious because you know we've got this owl here and is swooping over it's this lake whatever it is it's deep water and water as we know from the tarot it talks about emotions and feelings and stuff and still waters run deep but the moon is there and the moon is so bright on that it's literally lighting up everything. And the owls are messengers from spirit. So it could be that you've been having a bit of intuition recently about certain things. That's messages coming from the other side that's telling you, you know, giving you guidance on something. Maybe you've been having some pretty vivid dreams. That is guidance from spirit, trying to help you without pushing you trying to help you get into the right direction. It's so bright, look at it. It could speak of work that you've done on yourself. It could be shadow work. It could be, you know, you pulling apart little bit of your psyche and trying to work out exactly what it is that you've been holding on to and more importantly why you've been holding on to it because a lot of people do things without even realizing why that they're doing them you know they, they, they don't stop to consider why they've had the reaction that they have or why they've decided to do a particular thing and there's there's internal drivers for that and until you understand those until you can pull them apart and get a sense <laughs> and as I pull this up these shadow cards underneath we've got the hermit and we've got temperance you know, which literally talk about going within and healing yourself you know. and this is why you're decisively walking away from something in November it's why you've made this decision to do it because you've spent the time looking at yourself, reflecting, just as the moon is reflected in the water, reflecting on what it is that has been driving you, what's been going on inside, why you've been clinging to something. I love that. I'm really, really chuffed that you've been doing that. The two cards that you have to clarify are the Nine of Pentacles and the Knight of Pentacles. You know, both Earth, Earth, Earth energy, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. But I, I don't think that these are people to you. I think this is energy right and the energy of these two cards as is as follows right 
So the Nine of Pentacles is about independence. It's about working really hard on yourself and your own circumstances to make something for you, just you. Yeah. Well, not just you, actually, because in this card we have, we've got a little snail down there, a little snail. And we've got a hawk just sat on her hand there. Other people will reap the benefit of what it is that you're doing, but primarily you have been the driving force behind this, changing your circumstances to suit you rather than to suit everybody else. But those people, there's a, a quote that I absolutely love, I read a little while ago. It said that the only people that benefit from you not having, no, the only people that will have a problem with you having no boundaries is, are those who benefited from you having none in the first place. And what I feel with this card is that those new boundaries that you're starting to put in place, that new understanding of yourself and what you will accept and what you won't accept and why you do certain things and why you don't do certain things, why you react in a particular way. Those people who respect that will now gravitate towards you. And you've kicked out those ones that don't add to your existence. You know, the snail's coming towards the woman, the hawk's sat on her hand, you know, you're attracting like to you. You're starting to resonate at a different frequency, I think. And it's powerful and it's independent and it's it's someone who is not afraid to be by themselves, as so many people are. You don't need external validation or the external validation of being with someone else wearing a particular brand of clothes or living in a certain area, you know, any of those things. It's quite a great deal of self-awareness implied here. And people are gravitating towards it. Your tribe will gravitate towards it. And the Knight of Pentacles, again, Earth energy. The Knight of Pentacles is probably the least dramatic and the least exciting knight in the deck. He's certainly the slowest, without question. Yeah. <coughs> but he's dependable, he's committed. He's moving slowly because that pentacle that he has in his hand there, he's very, very aware of the worth of that pentacle. Right? He knows how valuable that is. And his job is to transport it somewhere else, in one piece, unscathed, unscratched, untarnished, in any way. And I don't think it's any accident that it's come out directly after the Nine of Pentacles because this is you asserting your shit in your space and putting yourself where you probably should have been for a long time, but it's taken you this, this time, this reflection, this kicking out of things that are in your space that shouldn't be there anymore. But you're ready to start progressing with that and start moving that into all different areas of your life because it be, could be that this is, is literally just an internal state at the moment but as within so without it, once you start making those changes internally you will start to see them reflected in the 3d world and the pentacles are all about the material world and what we can perceive around us in the 3d and i think that so this is what's going on inside outside you're going to continue that work and it's going to be slow, because the Knight of Pentacles is slow. You know. But it's methodical and it's fastidious. And if, if you wanted to task any of the Knights with getting a job done, that's the one that you would use. Because not only will he do it with care and with diligence, he will also get it done. He will finish the job. The Knight of Swords might not. The Knight of Wands certainly won't. The Knight of Cups is, is, is too daydreamy to pay any attention to anything. This is really solid energy moving forwards. Those changes that you are, that you have wrought inside yourself are going to start manifesting out around you. But it's going to be slow and it's going to take some time. But you are definitely on the right path. The final card that you've got is the Queen of Wands. I love the Queen of Wands. Obviously, she's the feminine embodiment of the of the uh, fire energy, the fire suit. Right? So generally, as a queen, 
she's receptive. You know, she doesn't go out looking for things. Things come to her. You know, people come to see the queen. She doesn't go to see them. But she's confident. She's self-assured. She's dynamic. Of all the queens, she's the one that I think actually is probably the happiest doing her own thing. You know, obviously, she has a male counterpart, but this is there. Like this, this queen actually reminds me of my grandmother. She was an old gypsy, and um, she used to periodically just go missing, and. Uh, nobody would would know where she'd gone we get a phone call you know, has anybody seen you know, her and she'd have fucked off on holiday to somewhere and just not mentioned it to anyone uh, i get the same kind of vibe of the queen of wands as i do with my grandmother you know she's she, she doesn't have to answer to anyone the relationship that she has with the, queen, the king of wands is it's very equal you know, they both like to go off and do their own thing. In fact, they wouldn't stay together if they didn't have the ability to go off and do their own thing. She's independent, she's self-assured, she does her own thing. And I think this is what you are transitioning into. Because I know the Queen of Cups is your queen, but for the month of November, and possibly for a little while leading up to this, you have... The energy that the Queen of Cups has given you has actually left you feeling a bit stagnant and, and the Queen of Cups can be a bit stagnant. But what you need is to be able to move a bit further out of yourself. Assert your independence. She's assertive as shit. You know, absolutely is. She's assertive, she's confident, she's self-assured. She will go and do her own thing. And I think I think this is where you are headed. You, know? you need a bit more of the Queen of Wands in you than you do of the Queen of Cups right now. And the two cards that came out to clarify were the star and the ten of pentacles. Now, the star's the card of Aquarius. That's number 17 in the ma major arcana. And although she's an air... The star is an air card. You know, it's, it's Libra, Gemma. Like, it's not, it's Aquarius. It's air energy. But I feel like it's got a really watery vibe to it. Much like Temperance, which is, uh, you know, fire and Sagittarius. That always has a watery kind of feel to it as well. She's balancing her emotions. She's balancing herself as a human being. You know, water is emotion, but we've also got the ground here. She's got one foot in, one foot out. She's pouring into both. She's naked. So she's vulnerable, but she's absolutely unconcerned by this. You know, and that's a level of maturity that I think you're aspiring to. She's shedding her fear. You know, If you look at that card and imagine yourself being that person, what, what you feel is the horror of somebody seeing you naked next to a lake. You know, because you would be judged or you would be humiliated or, or one of these things. The star card talks about losing that fear. The Queen of Wands is fearless, completely fearless, possibly to a fault. But it's talking about not being afraid to lose your vulnerability, to lose your, your cloak, your tethers, those things that, that, that stop the real you from shining within. Don't be afraid to be vulnerable because there's a tremendous healing that comes with that. We've got the moon, we've got the star, we've got you know, the eight of cups. These, these things are all happening at night. Yeah. It's all happening in your subconscious and that's tremendous. I love it final card that you've got is the Ten of Pentacles. The Ten of Pentacles is the, the culmination of the, the Pentacles suit, well, certainly the pips, anyway. And it's obviously a, directly, a direct step up from, from the Nine of Pentacles. Uh, and I feel like this is the external manifestation of what it is that 
you're you're doing with yourself at the moment. You know, it's almost like when you read it in that way because they actually go that way. You're going from the nine where all of this stuff is internal and this is you know, your very small corner of the universe, progressing using the Knight of Pentacles to the ten. And this is stability. This is commitment. This is this is healing yourself to be able to appreciate those things that you are now bringing into existence. You're changing, Cancer. You're evolving. Yeah, and then. And part of your maturing is, is understanding what to let go, who to let go. You know, this queen has a great love of self. She really does, you know. And these women enjoy their own company, all of them. And maybe you're sloughing off an element of codependency that you've had. As I'm looking at these two cards here, you know, there's, they're, they're obviously pentacles, they're not stars, but I see the similarities in the shapes. Following your star towards the ten of pentacles, it's, it's complete material comfort. It's, it's all of your needs being taken care of, but it's quite a lot of your wants being taken care of as well. I'm going to pull another card for that because I just want to see something. I'm giggling because the card that just jumped out was the King of Wands. He's been putting in quite a few appearances this morning. I've been using, I've used like four different decks this morning for different readings. And the King of Wands have popped out in all of them. But I'm smirking because he's the counterpart to the Queen. And as it sits here like this, we've got the Queen, you healing, you manifesting all this, this cool stuff into your existence that you like and then we've got the king we've got the king of wands underneath so this is again aries leo sag energy it's the king is astrologically speaking leo and the queen is aries but this is energy you know and as much as i don't really bother with love readings particularly because i think there are a lot of talented readers out there for whom that is their forte and i don't intend to trample on their toes with that because I don't read that way. I'm more interested in what's going on with you internally than whoever's coming in externally. It is the counterpart to this new energy that you're, you're rocking at the moment, Cancer. And once you've healed, you create this for yourself. You. And the Nine of Pentacles and the Queen of Wands and the Star. This is all of your creation. And once that's created, you're kicking out a different frequency and you are attracting people to your existence who complement you. Not complete you, right? Like this this energy here, this this all of this. It's just codependency. This is being reliant on other people for validating your existence and all of that kind of letting that slide and when you do you will attract people this name was just hawks whatever you know you'll attract to your existence those people who complement it not complete it Not your other half. Because this could be a person. This could be, you know, an Aries, Leo, Sag, male, you know, slightly older, blah, 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 blah. It could be a group of friends. You know, it, 
could indicate a best friend. It could indicate just, just the people around you. And I feel that's more what it is. You know, it's meeting new people who are on your wavelength, who are on the same page as you. Because the tarot is like, it's all about symbolism. All of it. And you must, reading it too literally is, is often a mistake. But if you're resonating at this frequency, like the Queen of Wands, and you are throwing out that kind of vibe, naturally, those that will be attracted to you are your, your counterparts, those who add to your existence. I've got the moon again, yeah. It's you again. You and your people. I think it's lovely. I'm not sure I get a sense of the retrograde having anything to do with this, to be honest. There's a great deal of internal work that's gone on here and I think it's entirely aside. To that but you're so close I really love it yeah so if this resonated with you I'd love it if you just like the video or something or comment would be great and please subscribe like that would be amazing um, I'm gonna be uploading video content more frequently now because this is my full-time gig this is what I do so um, expect to see a lot of me and if you um, subscribe then you'll get notified when I upload new stuff anyway um, this actually warms the cockles of my heart I'm not gonna lie it's a really nice reading cancer even if it's a bit difficult at the beginning of the month so I'm gonna leave it there um, best of luck you've got this and you're so close so close until next time take care